Last week's sleepers definitely showed us a level of success that our week one sleepers did not. Baker, while slightly disappointing still, outperformed his ranking on the week, which is all that we can really ask for. I'm going to be honest with you. Rashad White was a huge miss. But this Bucks offense as a whole is really quickly turning into an offense we're avoiding at least this week with Mike Evans uh, suspended and Chris Godwin likely out again with a hamstring injury. Curtis Samuel, though, really came out of nowhere. Not really out of nowhere if you uh, saw what we talked about last week. He finished as wide receiver 12 and half PPR, quickly becoming a must-start option, very clearly a key part of that commander's offense. And then Conklin got the volume that we were hoping for and finished his tight end 16. Not quite the level of success we were looking for, but he still outperformed his ranking, which is really all that we can ask. With that being said, let's hop into this week's options as sleepers. At quarterback, we're looking at quarterback Trevor Lawrence, who is our quarterback 19 on the week in our JWB weekly rankings. Lawrence finally looks to be living up to his billing as one of the top quarterback prospects in recent memory. After finishing at quarterback 12 last week, Lawrence gets what looks to be a high scoring potential matchup with the Chargers with the Chargers team that may be, mis- may be missing some key pieces as Keenan Allen is still working his way back from a hamstring an- injury and Justin Herbert is dealing with a rib injury. Lawrence has received phenomenal protection thus far, getting a top 10 Uh, protection rate on player profiler which has led him to being graded as a top 12 quarterback by player profiler's accuracy rating and the clear upgrades to the offense that were made this year are really shining through another thing of note with Lawrence is while he hasn't run a ton this year he does have three carries in the red zone which is seventh amongst quarterbacks so a little bit of rushing upside is there as well to help Lawrence potentially finish a little bit higher given some uncertainty on some of the top quarterback names such as Herbert due to injury or guys like Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady due to a lack of offensive options Lawrence looks to be a very solid option this week to potentially repeat as a quarterback one When it comes to our running backs, we're looking at Jamal Williams, who is our running back 40 on the week. While, you know, let's be honest here, DeAndre Swift is clearly the more talented running back on that team. Williams isn't a slouch. He leads all running backs in football in red zone touches through two weeks, including three goal line touches, which gives us some touchdown upside that we really need for him to perform. Even with Swift sharing the backfield duties and and dominating that snap share, Williams is in line for a lot of touches. He's got 25 touches through two weeks, which is certainly nothing to bat an eye at. While more of a floor play than a ceiling swing, he does possess a fairly high ceiling if Swift's ankle injury flares back up in the middle of the game. Uh, Swift got a rest practice this week, um, so they're really making sure that he stays healthy, and they used him in situations where he was at a lower risk of injury last week as well, so something important to note with Williams' upside here. Um, He doesn't offer the receiving upside traditionally that Swift does, and he's not going to be the guy who's breaking off big runs like Swift does, but he gives us enough upside this week to outperform that running back 40 ranking and half PPR and be a solid flex option or even running back two in a deeper league. When it comes to wide receivers, we're looking at Jacoby Myers. Myers is ranked as our wide receiver 39 on the the week. We are only entering our third game in the season, but it looks like we're well underway of just watching Jacoby Myers continue to get open and get targets. With 19 targets through two games, it's hard to find this level of volume in our sleeper rankings. And looking deeper down, you know, it's hard to find volume consistently. It's more of a, a big play boom that you're hoping for with a lot of guys. The TDs have been very few and far between for Jacoby Myers. He's, you know, four years into his career now. He's only got two touchdown catches on something like 181 career receptions. He continues to be targeted at an elite rate, though. We're well underway. Um, He's at about a 29.7% target share currently. He's had 23% or higher each of the last two seasons. So this is just something that's going to continue sustaining as he's the wide receiver one in that offense. This Patriots offense, though, has been a bit disappointing, which is probably why Meyer is a little bit lower down our rankings this week. But that being said, he's the half PPR wide receiver 25 on the season right now, and he should be in for a good week against the Baltimore defense that just got absolutely torched by the Miami Dolphins the week prior. I'm confidently throwing Myers in my lineup this week, especially given that there's still some wide receiver injuries and suspensions that are stopping some of the top options from being in play. When it comes to tight end, it continues to be very, very disgusting this year. Um, Kyle Pitts off to a really slow start. George Kittle getting hurt. A lot of people's later options, uh, some favorites like Cole Komet off to really disappointing starts. We're left kind of picking through the crumbs to really find somebody that's worth starting week to week. That being said, Irv Smith finally looks to be stepping into the role that people have been waiting for. 
having just finished as the tight end three last week we have him lower than that this week in our rankings but he does possess a lot of upside um irv is getting a Lions defense that has allowed some solid games to Dallas Goddard, who finishes the tight end 13, and Logan Thomas, who finishes the tight end six thus far in the season. After playing just 27.6% of the snaps in week one, Herb doubled that number and then some in week two and ran 28 routes, pulling in eight targets and got his second red zone target of the year. And that's completely ignoring the fact that he dropped another would-be touchdown in that game as well. That probably would have made him the tight end overall one on the week. He's not my favorite player. I've been very vocal about not loving Irv Smith's talent and not loving what he contributes to the football team. But this week, he is in a spot for some undeniable potential success. And it's in a matchup that should be comparatively high scoring to what we saw the Vikings be able to put up on Monday Night Football. Thank you all for tuning into this week's Sleeper episode. Again, my name is Jake, and you can follow me on Twitter at Perry underscore FF. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and follow the JWB team at JWB underscore FF on Twitter as well. Thank you all for tuning in, and we will see you in next week's episode.